If you are like I was a while ago, you might have no idea what network transparency means and more importantly, why you should care. Honestly, I didn't care either. But then I started digging and it turned out to be one of those things you don't realize is significant until you need it. So let's discuss what network transparency is and why it's been such a big deal for Linux users and how Wayland changes everything. Picture this, you're using your computer at home. It might be a laptop or your desktop PC and you're maybe running a web browser or some other graphical app. But surprise, the application is actually running not on your computer, but on some remote machine, maybe even miles away. Now, here's the important thing. You don't even notice that it's not running on your computer, but somewhere else. It looks and works just as it's on your computer. This is the magic of network transparency, the ability to run applications remotely, but interact with them as if they are local. So this whole where this is running part is invisible to you. That's what transparency means. The details of the network just melt into the background and you're none wiser. This invisible remote magic has been super important for things like remote work, where you might want to run some applications on a more powerful machine that is located somewhere else. So you're just using your local, less powerful computer to use the power of those beefy machines to do the heavy lifting. Let me give you an example. For the past two years, I've been remotely connecting from my MacBook at home to my university workstation computer, or even the high performance computing cluster for my computations. Why I had to do this? It's to run GPU heavy programs for my research. My MacBook couldn't handle those tasks, but thanks to network transparency, it didn't have to. I could use those remote machines to do the hard stuff while my local machine just displayed the results. It was all working so smooth that I hardly gave it a second thought. Now, here is where things get interesting or frustrating, depending how you look at this. If your remote server, or basically the machine that you're trying to log into remotely, runs on X11 or ran on X11, you probably never had to think about the network transparency. I didn't because it was all working just fine. I never noticed anything. I never even knew that this existed or this was ever a problem. I just used SSH to log in into the system and do my work. And this was all in good until that remote server computer ran on X11. So I never really noticed any difference or anything special about being able to remotely log in and do my work. But then one day, the operating system running on that remote server was replaced by another operating system, which is still Linux, but the default display server or display server protocol was Wayland. Basically communication protocol that specifies the communication between uh, display server and its clients. And in this case, the clients would be you trying to remotely log in to that remote server and display graphical data over the network. With X11, network transparency was standard. X11 could handle graphical data for both local and remote applications, meaning you could easily interact with graphical applications on a remote server over a network. You would just SSH into the remote machine and boom, you are in. But then came Wayland and things have changed. Wayland was designed for modern local machines, which is great. It didn't include the network protocol that X11 had. So in other words, Wayland doesn't do network transparency, which means you can no longer transmit the graphical data over a network. So if you're used to X11 where everything remote works just like magic, now you'll notice something different. You can just SSH into a remote machine and run graphical application over a network. And here I specify graphical because you still can SSH into the remote machine and just find your way around the remote computer using the terminal session, the graphical applications are no go. And maybe if you're like me and you've been doing most of your work through the terminal on a remote machine, you might not have noticed this problem because you never needed to work with the graphical applications over the network in the first place. And for the longest time, I didn't. And that's why I was blissfully unaware that such problem could exist. But the moment I needed to use graphical application, I was hit with realization. Wayland is not like X11. So the obvious question is then, if Wayland doesn't support network transparency, what do we do? How do we get around this? Well, the solution isn't as seamless as X11, but it can be done. We can build that bridge that is missing in the Wayland protocol. There are a few third-party tools that allow you to set up remote desktops or access graphical applications over a network on a remote machine, even if you're using Wayland. And in the next video, 
we'll dive into those solutions. I tried my best to categorize them and give you a clear guideline or decision tree that will help you to choose the best solution for your particular setup. That video is in the process of being edited and I'll upload it shortly after this one, but I hope this video helped you to clear up what network transparency is and why it is important. So make sure to stick around for a deeper dive into how to set up remote access on Wayland 